welcome to our YouTube channel. Welcome to Add Maths Plus Maths. So, in this video, we will be discussing mathematics paper 4, variant 2 of February March 2020, item numbers 10 and 11. Let's move on to question number 10. Question number 10 is a problem about functions. So, you will see that there are three functions over here f which is 4x minus 1 g which is x squared h which is 3 raised to the power of negative x so if you want to find out the first question is f of x minus 3 i will just basically take a look at the f okay and then change the value of the x there with x minus 3 okay just change it so it will become 4 times the quantity of x minus 3 minus 1 then we'll just simplify by expanding the brackets so 4 times x will be 4x 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 then minus 1 negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13 so our final answer here is 4x minus 13 now let's move on to question number 2 g of 5 of x so basically i will be looking at the g and change that x with 5x and if I want to change that x with 5x I need to put bracket okay 5x to the power of 2 and remember the law of exponent a times b inside the bracket raised to a power will be equivalent to a to the power of n times b to the power of n therefore this will become 5 to the power of 2 times x to the power of 2 and 5 power of 2 or 5 squared is equal to 25. So our answer here is 25 x squared. Okay, let's go to letter B. For letter B, I am looking for the inverse function. So this is a symbol for inverse function of what? Of the f. And when we are looking for the inverse function, the first step that we need to do is to change the function notation f of x to y. So if I will change, it will become y is equal to 4x minus 1. And then, after that, I will change all the x to y's and the y's to x. So basically, it means I will interchange the y and the x. It will become x is equal to 4y minus 1. Next, after that, you can solve for y or make y the subject of the formula or subject of the equation. Okay. In this case, if I want to make y the subject of the equation, I'll add both sides by 1 so that the negative 1 there will be removed. So it will become x plus 1 is equal to 4y. And then I will divide both sides by 4 so that y is equal to x plus 1 over 4. Okay. And the last step, of course, is to replace the y with the notation f raised to the power of negative 1 of x which is the symbol for inverse function so we'll have that therefore the inverse function of f is equivalent now to x plus 4 uh, x plus 1 over 4 okay let's move to the next question letter c find the value of h of h of 1 correct to four significant figures so what is h h is 3 raised to the power of negative x so if i will change that x with a 1 okay it will become h of 1 is equivalent to 3 raised to the power of negative 1 and remember the law of exponent 8 raised to the power of negative n is equal to 1 over a to the power of n okay meaning if I will bring down 3 to the power of negative 1 and bring it down, I'll have 3 to the power of positive 1. 1 over 3 is the value of h of 1. Okay? Since you have here h of h of 1, okay, I will just put in this h of 1 inside another h. It will be h of h of 1 is equivalent to h of 1 over 3. Therefore, I will be basically changing that x with 1 over 3. Okay, so it will be 3 to the power of negative 1 over 3. And remember, if I have this one, 
meaning low of exponent, I will bring it down to make the index positive. So I have 1 over 3 to the power of 1 over 3. Okay, And there is another law of exponent that says a to the power of 1 over n is equivalent to n root of a. So meaning I'll have okay, 1 over third root of 3 or cube root of 3. But okay, there is something that says here correct to four significant figures. So it says it's asking us to write this in two decimal places with four significant figures. Okay? So just do this in your calculator. You will get 0 0.69336127474. Okay? Since we are writing correct to four significant figures, I am going to consider 6, 9, 3, and 3. Okay? But the following number is 6, so it will become 0 0.6934. Okay, so that's our answer. Next. Letter D, number 1. Show that G of 3x minus 2 minus H of negative 3 can be written as 9x squared minus 12x minus 23. So we will just evaluate first the G with 3x minus 2 and evaluate the H with negative 3. Then just put that minus. Of course, when you evaluate h of negative 3, you have to put bracket, okay? So, g of g of 3x minus 2 will be 3x minus 2 squared, which will become 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. When you do the square of a binomial here, 3x squared is 9x squared. 3x times negative 2 is negative 6x times 2 is negative 12x. Then, negative 2 squared is positive 4, okay? Next. I have h of negative 3. So it will become 3 to the power of negative negative 3. Okay? And remember, negative times negative is positive. So it will become 3 to the power of 3, which is equivalent to 27. Therefore, I can just put in 9x squared. Okay? 9x squared minus 12x plus 4, then minus, then 27. So, 4 minus 27 is negative 23. So, you'll have the final answer okay, shown. Next, use the quadratic formula to solve 9x squared minus 12x minus 23 is equal to 0. Give your answers correct to two decimal places. Okay, what is quadratic formula? Quadratic formula for ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 is x equals negative b plus or minus b square, square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Therefore, okay, I have to identify what is a, what is b, and what is c. So, a is 9, b is negative 12, c is negative 23. Okay? So, it will become negative, negative 12, because b is negative 12, as I said, as I said a while ago. Then, plus and minus. Square root of b is, again, negative 12, then square root, okay, minus 4 times 9 times negative 23, okay? Then 2a below, so I'll have 2 times 9, okay? So you'll have that. After that, you will get, okay, to simplify, negative 12 squared is 144, negative 4 times 9 times negative 23, you'll get this. So, plus 828, okay? Then, divide by 18, okay? Of course, you have to simplify 144 plus 828, okay? So, you'll get square root of 972, okay? Now, you can separate the two equations, okay? By one is plus and the other one is minus. So, x sub 1 is 12 plus square root of 972 over 18, and x sub 2 is equal to 12 minus square root of 972 over 18. Okay? Since we have positive and negative here. Okay? Just put these values into your calculator. You will get the first value of the x is 2.398717. And the second value is negative 1.065384. 
Okay? Take note that you have to write your answer correct to two decimal places. The first value is 2.40 because I have the second decimal place is 9. I'll add up 1 because this is 8. Okay? And then I have 6 as the second decimal value. Okay? I'll have 5, so I'll add 1 also. So negative 1.07. Okay? So these are the values 2.40 and negative 1.07. Okay, next, letter E. Find x when f of 61 is equivalent to h of x. Okay, f of 61, I will just basically change the x with 61. So I'll have 4 times 61 minus 1 will be 243. Equiv equivalent now to h of x. What is h of x? It is 3 to the power of negative x. I'll have 243 is equal now to 3 to the power of negative x. Okay, I will bring down by using a power of x is equal to a power of y. If a power of x is equal to a power of y, then x is equal to y. Okay, remember 243 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which means it is equivalent to 3 power of 5. Therefore, 3 power of 5 is equal to 3 power of negative x. Next, okay, we can apply this rule already. Okay, by applying that rule, 5 is equal to negative x. Therefore, x is equal to negative 5. Okay, that's the last question for number 10. Let's go to number 11. A curve has y is equal to x cubed minus 3x plus 4. Letter A, work out the coordinates of two stationary points. Recall that the stationary points of a curve can be found by following the steps below. Find the derivative of the equation of the curve. Okay, derivative. So, remember that d over dx of x power of n or the derivative of x power of n is equal to bring that index in front times x, then subtract 1 to the index. Okay, so therefore, if I have x cubed, okay, I'll bring that 3 in front, okay, and I'll have x, okay? Then I'll have 3 minus 1 is squared, okay? Then minus 3. Why minus 3 only? Because 1 minus 1 is 0. x power of 0 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3, okay? Then all constants, positive 4, doesn't have any derivative, okay? It is equivalent to 0. Okay, so since dy over dx is equal to 3x squared minus 3, the second step is the derivative of the equation always determines the gradient of the tangent on the point. However, the gradient of the tangent on a stationary point is always equal to 0. So find the values of the x by making dy over dx is equal to 0. So if I want to make the dy over dx is equal to 0, it will become 0 is equal to 3x squared minus 3. So always remember, why did we make it 0? Because the gradient of the tangent on a stationary point is always equals to 0. Okay? So I will just put in plus 3 to both sides or subtract 3x squared. Okay? Okay, so I plus 3 or added 3 to both sides. So 3x squared is equal now to 3. I will divide both sides by, okay, I will divide both sides by 3, so x, x squared now is equal to 1, and then square root both sides, I will have positive or negative square root of 1, and square root of 1 is equivalent to 1. Therefore, the two values of x are positive 1 and negative 1. So since x are positive 1 and negative 1, okay, you want to find out also what will be the value of the y. If you want to find out the value of the y, okay, use the equation of the curve. What is the equation of the curve? The equation of the curve is y equals x cubed minus 3x plus 4. Okay, so I will just change it to 1 and negative 1, those x's. So, finding the y for 1, it will become 1 cubed minus 3 times 1 plus 4, which will give you 1 minus 3 plus 4. 1 minus 3 plus 4 is 2. 
Okay. Next, I have negative 1 cubed minus 3 times negative 1 plus 4. If I will have that, I will have negative 1 cubed is 1. Negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. So, 1 plus 3 plus 4 is 6. Okay. You'll have now x sub 1 and y sub 1. x sub 2 and y sub 2. So I have 1 and 2, negative 1 and 6. Okay? So those are the stationary points. And that's uh, those are the steps on how to find out stationary points. Okay? Next, letter B. Determine whether each stationary point is a maximum or a minimum value or minimum point. Give reasons for your answers. Recall, the nature of na the nature of a stationary point can be determined by finding the second derivative. So you should know how to find out the second derivative. Remember that the first derivative is 3x squared minus 3. Okay? Since 3x squared minus 3 is the first derivative, the second derivative is, you see, I have 2 there as the index. I'll bring it in front. 2 times 3 is 6. Then 2 minus 1 is 1. And I, I told you a while ago, if it's a constant number, there is no derivative. The derivative will be equivalent to 0. So plus 0 will give you 6x plus 0. Okay. Of course, plus 0 is nothing. So I will just put 6x. Okay. Then for 1 and 2, for 1, 2, dy, uh, d squared y or double derivative is equivalent to 6 times 1. So, I just get the double derivative which is 6x. I change the value of the x with the value of the x on that point. So, 6 times 1, it is positive 6. Okay? For negative 1, 6, the double derivative is equivalent to 6 times negative 1 which is equivalent to negative 6. Okay? Remember, that if the double derivative is greater than zero, okay, other in other words, it is positive, then the point is a minimum point. If it is less than zero, the point is a maximum point. So in here, the point is a maximum point or oh, minimum point because it is greater than zero, it's positive. So if it is negative, it is maximum point. Okay, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Happy learning. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell if you have learned something in watching this video.